Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Best of British Blackwell. Something slightly different for you today. Today I've been sent uh, some products by a company called Wild and Game. Now Wild and Game have kindly sent me... Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Best of British Blackwell. Something slightly different today. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a company called Wild and Game. They've been ever so kind and sent me a box of some of their products. Now who are Wild and Game? They are a non-for-profit organisation whose sole aim is to promote the use of game meats in our kitchens up and down the country. They sell uh, game products which are reared in the UK, reared in Great Britain. And the best thing about it is that game meat is some of the lowest in fat content and the lowest in cholesterol. Some of the products that they sell include things that you would never even consider eating on a day-to-day -day basis like pheasant, partridge, boar, venison, um, and it comes in all kind of, uh, kinds of shapes and sizes. If you just want the raw meat, yes they can sell you that, but if you want things like pies, burgers, sausages, ready meals, they provide that too. I'm going to provide you with all of the links to all of the details to the Wild and Game uh, website and how to order your products. But what we're also going to do is take a look at the products that they've sent me, primarily just to show you how well packaged these things are and how they turn up, but then also to show you uh, how you would go about cooking them. Another great thing about Wild and Game is that if you check out their website, like I said, all the details will be below here, you'll be able to see that they provide you with really good recipes on how you would go about cooking some of the stuff that you would order from them. So uh, let's go and have a look at what they've sent us and let's see uh, what we can do with it. So first of all, let's have a little bit of a close up of the box and the packaging and see how this has arrived. This arrived at my house maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. So I've set the camera up as quickly as I can just to be able to unbox this for you. So you're gonna actually see how these products come out of this box. And it's the first time I've seen this as well. Look, uh, labels completely sealed here, not touched at all. Okay, so what's very encouraging immediately whenever you receive fresh products um, via delivery is it's cold. That's a really, really good sign. Okay, I've just changed position slightly so you can see what's coming out here. A little bit more packaging. And always great to see these in here. And as you can see, these ice packs, gel ice packs, that can still almost completely frozen. That's absolutely superb. There you go, if you don't believe me. Perfect. Now, what have we got? Let me show you a little look inside here. Hopefully you can see that. Everything in here has also been individually wrapped. So there's another couple of bags here as well. Let's get these bags out. Let's put this package to one side and let's see what's in the first one. Another chiller pack in there, which is still completely frozen. Really impressive. Okay, so the first product out here is a steak, pheasant and an ale pie. Premium award winning pies made with game from the great British countryside. That looks lovely. This one is an award winning pork, pheasant and caramelised onion pie. Lovely. So as I said, perfect kind of ready meal. Just knock up a bit of mash with that. That's good to go. What have we got here? Wild and game partridge fillets in lemon and chilli marinade. Look at those, lovely. And these are actually frozen. Wild and game pheasant fillets in a garlic herb marinade. Look at that. Beautifully well packaged. There's definitely no chance of these coming undone. And what I'd also notice is along the bottom here, um, it's got the resealable packets if you don't use them all in one go. That's brilliant. So that's lovely. Let's have a look at what's in the second packet. So the second packet comes with any, another solidly frozen ice pack which I again can reuse and what have we got here traditional pheasant pasty look at that that looks lovely and we 
we've got six wild boar and grouse sausages. And it looks like we've got some pate here. Pheasant, pistachio and port pate. That sounds uh, lovely, doesn't it? And the final thing in the packet here is venison and pheasant burgers. Absolutely lovely. Okay, so my initial thoughts are firstly, how wonderfully well this stuff was packaged. Lots of this, this stuff, you know, is still completely frozen, ready to go back into the freezer. You don't have to worry about eating it the day it's delivered. You know, it's really well packaged. Also, um, they've clearly thought about the sustainability of this because all of the packaging that this has arrived in, apart from the cardboard box, is completely reusable and I'll definitely be doing that. Um, the next thing to think about is what I'm actually going to make with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these products inside. I'm going to uh, have a look through the recipes that I found online on the uh, Wild and Game website. And I'm going to pick something to cook and I'll show you how I do that next. So the first thing from this trial pack that we're going to try is this beautiful looking steak, pheasant and owl pie. So this arrives ready to eat. Um, but we've uh, put it in the, uh, the oven for 30 minutes on 170. Let's have a little look and see what this pie looks like inside. Let's give this a cut. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful looking on the inside there. Lovely thick pastry. I'm going to try a little bit of that. Lovely tasting pie. Very, very rich inside. Beautiful, really. I'm just serving this up tonight with some Cavallo Nero, some braised asparagus and some new potatoes. And as with my, and as with all of my best of British Blackwell videos, where there's a pie, there's got to be just a little bit of gravy. And it makes a wonderful addition to this pie. Really, really tasty. So the next product that we're gonna be using from Wild and Game are their partridge fillets, which are in a lemon and chili marinade. These are perfect if you don't have a great deal of time. They cook just like chicken. So I'm gonna be searing these on a griddle and just serving them up with some salad and some pizza breads. Um, very similar to the uh, recipe on the recipe card that they sent along with uh, the, the, the products here, but just a few subtle differences. So come over and have a look, let's make a start. So here they are, these are the partridge fillets. Um, as you can see, they're very, very similar, really, in shape to a chicken breast fillet. And to be honest with you, um, that's the kind of how you cook them as well. You treat them as if they were a basic chicken breast. Obviously, they don't, because they're smaller, they don't need as long to cook. We'd have to do absolutely nothing to these. These are just going to go straight on the griddle, and I'm going to be serving it up, like I said, basic salad and some pitters. So let's get it over to the griddle. So here we have a very, very hot griddle pan and we're just gonna lay these straight on here. Okay, so we're ready to give these a turn now. And as you can see, they're, they're even taking on the, the color of a piece of grilled chicken. There we go. Two, three minutes either side on that partridge and it's done. I've got a little side salad here I've got a little bit of French dressing. Uh, there is, like I said, there is a recipe card where they teach you how to make a, a specific dressing for this using some lemon and garlic. Um, I haven't really got time for that today, to be honest with you. So I've just I've got some little pickled red onions there, uh, some garlic, um, uh, aioli, and stuffed pizzas. But let's give this partridge a try. Yeah, so it's really, really good. Very, very moist. Um, which is brilliant really because it's probably very easy to overcook this stuff because it's quite it's quite small but hopefully you can see there nice and moist and juicy the marinade is infused with this meat perfectly well probably because it's been vacuum packed big hits of lemon nice burn of chili really really good this took me no more than 10 minutes to throw together absolutely lovely so the third and final recipe that we're going to be making using the products from uh, Wild and Game um, is a pheasant uh, wellington. I'm going to be using these uh, pheasant fillets in a garlic and herb marinade and making a variation of the beef wellington just using this pheasant. 
this dish is a little bit more involved than the other dishes we've made so far, but you know, using a classic bit of game meat to make a classic British dish is what we're all about. So come over, have a look at the ingredients and let's make a start. So obviously the star of the dish is gonna be these beautiful um, pheasant fillets. We've also got some uh, mushrooms. We've got some, a couple of banana shallots, a couple of cloves of garlic, some puff pastry, shop ball, can make your own, but this is much quicker. I'm using some of the uh, homemade butter that I made. I'll share the link above here to how you can make your own butter, but normal butter, uh, shop ball butter will be fine. You're gonna need one egg. You're gonna need some mixed herbs and you're gonna need some pancetta. But because this is best of British Blackwell, we're using some thin and crispy smoked streaky bacon instead. I'm gonna start off by really thinly dicing these banana shallots. We want it to be as thin as possible because we're going to make a, um, not a sauce, but almost like a paste. So if you were making a beef Wellington, this would be the duck cell. They call it duck cell. Um, the difference in this Wellington is that you don't need a pancake or anything like that. You just need uh, the accompanying paste to go around the outside of the duck cell. So when I say trim these thin, what I'm gonna do is just thinly slice them along the top here. And this is pretty much as thin as we're gonna need them. Second stage is to take our garlic. We just wanna skin it and mince it. Easiest way of doing that I find is using the garlic press. So no great skill involved here just yet. Just take the skin off of the garlic and mince it down. Now with the mushrooms, we need to get these into a real paste. So easiest way of doing that is to get them into this little mini blender and grind them down. Okay, and the final part of preparation for our uh, filling here is gonna be some bacon. Like I said, in a Wellington, um, you can use pancetta, you can use parma ham. Here, I'm gonna get four decent pieces of very thinly sliced uh, English smoked bacon. And I'm just gonna thinly slice that some more, just down into these strips. So we're at the point now where we are going to start to prepare the filling that's gonna go inside this Wellington with the pheasant. So let's get some of that butter into a pan, let that melt down. Then we're gonna put in our shallots. And we're gonna put in our garlic. All classic flavor combinations. And we're gonna put in our bacon. What we're also gonna add in there is just a very, very small glug of olive oil. We give that a very quick mix. As you can see, I've not got this on a searing heat. This is just a very, very gentle heat. And the aim here is to sweat down those shallots, soften them off, just cook through that garlic and start to get those flavors out of that pancetta. Okay, so these have been going for a couple of minutes now and these shallots are beautifully soft, absolutely lovely. Beautiful smell of pancetta coming out of here. Although it's not pancetta, it's smoked bacon. But you'll forgive me. Then we're gonna go in with our mushrooms, which are minced down. Might not be the most appealing to people, Bear in mind, you don't have to put these mushrooms in here, but I really love a mushroom. They add a really lovely earthy texture to this. We have the mushrooms and we add a, about a teaspoon of dried herbs in here. Let's give it a little bit of a stir. Don't be tempted to add any more butter or oil to this pan. What we know about mushrooms is when you start to fry them down like this, they will release a lot of moisture. That's what we want. We want this to start to turn into a little bit of a paste. I did neglect to add 
that uh, another couple of additional ingredients that we're going to add to this are some sherry or uh, I'll be using some dessert wine and just a little bit of double cream to bind this all together just to stop it going too grainy. So we do want it to be a lovely luxurious filling. We don't want it to be dry because obviously we've got our um, um, uh, pastry there as well. So just let this cook out for a little bit. As you can see already, the moisture has come out of this, these mushrooms here, which is why the pan is not making that sizzling noise anymore. Uh, let that moisture dry out. Let this go a little bit pasty and then we'll add out um, uh, two wet ingredients. Okay, so we've cooked this down now to the point where there's hardly any moisture left in this pan. Now, before it gets to the stage where it's completely dry, let's add a little splash of dessert wine. Lovely and sweet. You can add sherry, you can add whatever you want in there as long as it's got quite a sweet taste to it. Beautiful. Now we're also gonna add a decent glug of double cream. We're going to turn the heat right down and we're going to let that cook down again. Okay, so we've let this simmer away now for a good couple of minutes and already you can see this is starting to thicken up into the texture that we want. We're going to take this off the heat now because anything cream based will continue to thicken on standing. So we're going to take this off the heat, transfer another pan straight over now we're going to start to work on these pheasant breasts. Now we're going to get these pheasant breasts on the go. So the other half of the knob of butter that we stuck into one side, stick this in the pan, melt this down. Okay, so these have had about a minute on this side. Just turn them over. We're not looking to get too much colour on them, nothing like that. Just get them started, just sear them off a little bit. Just start that cooking process. Most of the cooking process for these is going to be in the oven, but we don't want to put them into that pastry raw because we're going to end up with soggy pastry. So we just cook them off in this butter a little bit. In a minute, we'll be taking these off the heat. Okay, so we're going to get onto the stage now where we start to construct these mini Wellingtons. The key to this is try not to be too precise about it. We've got a nice sheet of uh, puff pastry here. We're going to cut this straight down the middle. And just as a guideline, rather than run the blade all the way through this pastry, we're just gonna lightly run it across the other side there. So we end up with half and then a little guide as to half, half and half here. Let's fetch our tongs. First thing we want to do is get one of these fillets probably on here. Another one of the larger fillets on here. And then one of the smaller fillets here and here. Let's put this to one side. Now what we want to do is position them in such a way that we're going to be able to encase them beautifully in this pastry. The pastry will stretch slightly so don't worry too much about it being absolutely perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to take our beautiful mushroom garlic pancetta and shallot sauce, spoon it over the top here. You don't need to use it all. I'm going to show you a beautiful trick, a beautiful little tip to use the rest of this here. Now what we want to do with this is take our beaten egg run it all around the outside both sides of this pastry this is going to help us stick the pastry down beautiful now it doesn't have to be perfect just roughly lift one side of the pastry over to the other and then we're going to cover it over just like that and the best way to cover it over is to grab a fork and 
grab a fork and just knit these edges in. Then when you've pinched all of the edges together, just take a knife and cut yourself three little lines on the top here, just to let the air escape. Now what we're gonna do is transfer these over into a, a, a baking tray. Now that we've got these onto the baking tray, what we're gonna do is use the rest of our egg whites here and our uh, beaten egg, and we're just gonna completely cover this pastry with this beaten egg. Once we've done this, this goes into the oven on 200 degrees uh, fan or 220 degrees centigrade conventional oven, gas mark seven, for about 15 minutes or until it's golden brown. Okay, so while our um, pheasant wellingtons are in, here's a little trick to help save some waste on the filling that you created there if you didn't use it all. So what I've got here is one of these uh, little chicken stock uh, liquid cubes and I'm going to add a little bit of water to that, a little bit of hot water and this pan's just gone back on the heat and I'm going to stir this liquid cube into a little stock cube straight into this sauce and I'm going to make a beautiful gravy to go with this just using all of the remnants of the filling that we didn't actually use in the Wellington. Okay, so we are now ready to serve this up and just take a look at that. Now don't get me wrong, I know that is a huge piece of food, but you can quite easily carve that in half and have that, you know, one between two people. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is take a look at the inside of this beautiful Wellington. Let's just cut this straight down the middle. Got a lovely piece of meat in there which I'm carving through at the moment. Let's just try and carve this open and just look at that beautiful pastry. Let me see if I can turn this around so you can see it properly. Look at that. Beautiful pastry, beautiful meat running through there. Let me turn that around, hopefully you can see that. Look at that, fantastic. I've just served this up with some herby mash and some creamed cabbage. And the final thing that I'm gonna to add to this is this little gravy that I told you about. Just a little chicken stock cube in there, little bit of water and the remnants of the filling that we put inside this Wellington. And we just give that a gentle pour all over here. Now that is amazing. Now all that remains really is the taste test. So let's get right in here. Cut a piece of this beautiful pheasant. Get some pastry, get some filling in here. Look at that. Just take a little bit less, I don't wanna burn myself. Wow we Everything about that is absolutely superb. Where you're expecting to get really beefy flavors from a Wellington, this is just beautifully subtle. Lovely garlic running through there. You've got that mixed herb. You've got those lovely mushrooms that are adding that moisture in there. That gravy is lovely. Don't get me wrong, this takes a little bit of effort to make, but honestly, it's worthwhile. It's so good. It's so luxurious, so rich, so beautiful. Honestly, absolutely one of the best things I've tasted in a very long time. Okay, so in summary guys, on the whole, I was incredibly impressed with all of the products sent to me by Wild and Game. What I would say is that there's probably a little bit of a stigma attached to game meat, something around the idea of it's a little bit elitist, it's a little bit expensive. What I think you'll find if you kind of venture down that route of trying a little bit more game meat is that it's better for you. Uh, than some of the meat that we we eat day, on, uh, day in, day out. It's actually a little bit cheaper, it's more sustainable, it's a lot easier to cook than you, you think. Um, my mind's changed slightly. Um, I've enjoyed every single minute of cooking with this, this produce and uh, big thanks go out to the guys at Wild and Game for sending me uh, the products. 
Um, if anyone's interested in buying products from Wild and Game, you will get a 10% discount if you mention uh, Blackwell or Best of British Blackwell when you place your order. I'll put all the details below in this video. But again, please do give it a go. It's a not-for-profit organization. What they're there to do is to promote the idea of using more sustainable meat, meats that are better for you, meats that are not aggressively farmed the way that things like beef and chicken are. Honestly guys, give it a go. Thank you for watching the videos and I'll see you again very soon.